The RCMP has arrested 14 anti-pipeline protesters in northern BC on Wet'suwet'en First Nations territory over the preparations for the construction of a pipeline. So first, I'm going to show you a video of the moment that the RCMP jumped over the gate and began arresting people. This video was shot by, uh, or at least put out by, CBC News journalist Chantal Balrichard. You're actually breaking someone's arm. You're Okay, so before I get into more detail on what exactly is going on here, I want to share this tweet that I saw from Billy Arma, which I think speaks for itself. Canada brought in shotguns to remove peaceful, unarmed Wet'suwet'en people from their own land and force a fracking pipeline across it without their consent. This is what we're worried about white nationalist Bolsonaro doing in Brazil, but it's happening right now in Canada. And I think that is a... Uh, a powerful comparison that at least woke me up to realizing that, yeah, he's right. So Bolsonaro, the fascist president of Brazil, is promising to open up the Amazon to oil companies or whoever wants to be able to, to buy that land. And that's exactly what's happening right now in Canada. Now, it is a little more complicated than that, and I'm going to get into the, the details around that. So first, here is what... um. Uh, here's why the RCMP felt they had the authority to do this. So this from the Globe and Mail. The Mounties were enforcing on December 14th court injunction giving Coastal Gaslink, a subsidiary of TransCanada Corp, access to the road where Wet'suwet'en people opposed to the pipeline had erected a checkpoint. And looking at the map here, you can see the site of protests marked along with uh, Coastal Gaslink's pipeline project. And quoting the uh, Globe and Mail, the $6.2 billion pipeline would ship natural gas from northeastern BC to a coastal terminal in Kitimat. It is part of a $40 billion LNG project announced by the BC and federal governments last fall. Coastal GasLink got its environmental certification for the pipeline in 2014, and TransCanada has signed project agreements with 20 First Nations groups along the route. But in order to do pre-construction work, TransCanada says its only access route is the bridge over the Morris River, which is the area where the checkpoints are. So there are many layers to this story, and it it's kind of complicated, but stick with me. So to understand here what's going on, this, this agreement that was signed by 20 First Nations groups, it actually does not apply to this land according to the hereditary chiefs. So this from CBC. Supporters at the camps remain opposed to the construction of the coastal gas link pipeline in the territory, despite the fact elected band councils along the route have made agreements with the company. But the hereditary chiefs said that under Wet'suwet'en law, the band councils don't have authority or jurisdiction over what happens in the nation's traditional territory. Quote, they're not the title holders or the caretakers of the land. The hereditary chiefs are, said Medik, who was one of those chiefs. Disagreement over the pipeline hinges on a key Supreme Court of Canada ruling from 1997, the Delgamook decision, which upheld Indigenous peoples' claims to lands that were never ceded by treaty. Now, to give you uh, a big picture idea on just what exactly is going on here, I saw this great tweet from uh, Naomi Klein, which really puts it into context. A shameful day for Canada, which has marked itself as a progressive leader on climate and Indigenous rights. It has just invaded unceded Wet'suwet'en territory and arrested land defenders, all for a gas pipeline that is entirely incompatible with a safe climate. And again, this is happening under Trudeau's Liberals and BC's NDP. These are two parties that are supposed to be on the left side of the political spectrum. Now, to be fair to at least the, the federal NDP, the federal NDP have come out and uh, been critical of uh, what the RCMP has done here. 
The federal NDP's reconciliation critic says the justification used for the RCMP's intervention is pretty lame in an era of supposed reconciliation with indigenous peoples. Romeo Saganash joined demonstrators on Parliament Hill before the group marched through downtown Ottawa streets with signs including a large red one reading, RCMP off Wet'suwet'en land. Saganash said he did not hear back from the provincial and federal Indigenous Affairs ministers he asked to help alleviate tension in northern BC prior to the arrest by the Mounties. So, at the very least, there is one party at the federal level defending the land of the Wet'suwet'en people. But also, I should say that the Green Party as well, Elizabeth May's party, are huge defenders of Indigenous people, their land, and the climate. So we have uh, Elizabeth May's one is the only member of the Green Party at the federal level. So we have one uh, MP in one party, and then the NDP, which I hope uh, as a whole adopt this this position in defending the rights of uh, First Nations in BC. So I uh, stories like this are hard to report on because there is no conclusion to this. This is an ongoing issue. It continues popping up, and our addiction to fossil fuels is really what drives all of this.